doing? This is Friendly Your Pocket Conversations with Hope Nation, episode number nine. All right. Nine is a good number, guys. It is completion. So, do your numerology. I'm not lying. Do your research. So, today, I just want to briefly touch on, it's Women's History Month. Clap for us. Good clap, guys. He's being a dad. Anyway, so it's Women's History Month. And I want to talk about some very influential women, starting with myself. Yay! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I want to start with myself, my mom, Tracy. Samaya is coming up. She's going to have a little business, you know, her business. And my grandmother. And I was writing all of you. I take notes while I'm thinking that because I don't want to forget stuff. And the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, comes from a woman. I talked, about, I lectured about the Candace women. They're in the Bible. Look them up. And they were a, a they were a fast group of African women. And if you wanted to get past them, you had to pay them. So anybody with the name Candace, you're a very powerful woman. Look up the um, spiritual meaning of your name. So anyway, coming back into modern history. You know, my grandmother was an entrepreneur. She had several different businesses and companies. And, you know, she had offices on 125th Street that was there for many, many, many years. A construction company, Lawrence George Construction. And I'm just very proud of the rich history that I have with women in business. My mom has a catering company. She has one in catering. She's had that for over 20 years. And then I... Started in my company back in around 2010 or 11, front of your pocket, which you see now. All of this was all up in here, and now I get to materialize it through all of you. And then we have Tracy over here, Mrs. Tam Tips herself. She edit, helped me edit my first book, and she's a resume writer, and you know, she's just a jack of all writing traits. You know, and this little one right here, you know, one day she's going to be something, whatever she wants to be. Yeah. yeah. And that's the beauty about it, because she can be whatever she wants to well, be. I'll have a, a um, all body shop in Newark one day. A what? All body? <laughs> Great mother's shop. <laughs> well, I don't know what you want, a car shop? No, it's called Hamida's all body shop. Yeah. Uh, she's just going to be taking her grandma's business. <laughs> yes, Amita Newark. You know, she's down there, Broad Street, right? Um, Branford. Branford Street. Yeah, she Branford. has a body shop with oils and thobes and all your spiritual essence needs. Go check her out. So we are surrounded by women in business. So it's just a natural thing, especially as black women, because that's how we survived when our husbands couldn't work. Or the husbands were taken out of the homes. Women had to naturally just survive. And so business is not even a thought for us. We just do it. Even if it sounds crazy, we just do it. And in the spirit of talking about influential black women, I'm just going to briefly touch on Sojourner Truth. Right? Sojourner Truth. She, uh, she was a, a runaway slave, if you want to call her that. She won the first case against ACS. <laughs> I was going to call it ACS, but she she took her slave master to court and got her child back, okay? After she ran away, she was able to get her son back. But the irony of it all, someone, kicked, like, he was, like, mysteriously went missing as an adult. So that's the crazy part. But she won her case against them and got her child back. Not only that, but isn't that something? And this is, um, this is in the you know late 1800s and uh by 1911 this is when women's day it was a day was first created and from 1911 then it went to 1978 they had women's week in sonoma california where she's from and they had a whole week and it did very well and then it evolved into well jimmy carter gave it a week and then it evolved in 1987 to a natural month. So that's how we got Women's History Month. So it's been around forever. And Sojourner Truth spoke at the first ever conference, the International Women's Day Conference. And that's where she gave her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman? Okay? Ooh. So that's how she ties into all of this. Um, she, she actually took money from her book, because she was a writer, and she wrote Sojourner Truth, a northern slave, and it was an autobiography, so to speak. And in that, in 
that book, she was able to take the money she got from that book, pay $300 for her house, and that's how she got her house, through her book. Like me! She reminds me of myself! So, that's a little fun fact. She's black, she's a woman, and we're here. Celebrate in something that she was a part of from the very inception. So that's why it's very important for all of us to start things because they're going to be around for little Tay Tays, you know, and, and other little babies. And, you know, you may think you're doing something really small and minute, but you are definitely contributing to the ecosystem that we call this life. So anything that you can think of can be a business. And, you know, it doesn't take much money to start. You got the legalities, names and trademarks and all of that. But just get started. Because even when you, before you get to a trademark and copyrights, you have to show your work. And what better way to show your work but to just get started. So I encourage all women, if you have a business idea, get started. Use your family. Use your coworkers. Use your girlfriends. That's what they're there for. They're your tests. You know, how you say crash test dummies, right? You know, they all read the book, you know, in pieces, you know. Anything we do, whether it's food, my mom cooking food and sampling and stuff like that, it all starts very small. So just do your part, right? So with that being said, I'm going to slide into Tam Tips. She wasn't thinking she was coming up so early. <laughs> You're going to die right on into Tam Tips. And she has some, she's going to be talking about counter offers because that happens in business, you know. You can say, I want 85000 They can come back and say, no, we won't give you 75 Or vice versa, you know. You can come in and get one way and give you something else. So there you go, Tam Tips. Tell them what to do. Yes. So um, that's true. I'm talking about for the people who are already at a job and looking to leave. If your current mm -hmm. job offers a counter offer you need to know why that's right um because a lot of times once you are ready to leave they'll do whatever it takes to reel you in but just because they get you to stay doesn't mean that they have to um keep up with the agreement so oftentimes especially in the corporate world if you give your two week notice or whatever and then they say oh no well, we'll match their offer. You may get your offer matched for, say, two, three months, and then they pull it back, and you're right back where you were when you turned down that job. Sure. It happens all the time, so you need to make sure you have everything in writing. When are the perks going to start? How long are they guaranteed to last? Have everything written down because you never know what's on their agenda, and they're not going to be transparent. It's no. just not going to happen. Um, so I suggest I've never accepted a, a counter offer because anytime I've been ready to thank you honey <laughs> anytime I've been ready to leave I was ready and that was just it so I encourage anybody who's looking to make sure you're actually ready to leave if it's something that you can possibly negotiate before you start your search I would say do that and if they still aren't going to meet you halfway or even agree to whatever you're asking for, whether it be a raise or vacation time or whatever it is. Then you start looking that way. When they do come with a counter offer, you're already like, no, because I already asked you and you said no, so I'm moving on. Because there's a lot of people who will stay and then three months down the line, that job that they were going to accept is gone off the table. They can't get it back. And now they're back at Square zero, or square zero, that's a, that's a circle zero, circle zero. <laughs> um, where they were prior to even accepting the counter. So you want to make sure you have everything in writing, and I do mean everything. If you need to write down what they had on when they said yes, then you need to write that down because it all boils down to what you can prove. And if you can't prove it, guess what? It's your word against theirs. It didn't happen. If it ain't in writing, it didn't happen. You hear it in corporate America all, all the time. time. Document, document, mm -hmm. document. Ask her our conversation. Get, yeah. get real familiar with that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Ask her our conversation. Ask her. I have to CYA. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. But yeah, she's absolutely right. I've seen it done. And they always blame it on budget. Yeah. Okay? They tell you. I've seen yes. people like get all happy about leaving a job because they're getting more money. And then someone runs back. Hey, Hope Nation! <laughs> we got cut off. 
It wasn't until the show was over on Anchor, because you know I do the podcast on Anchor, and this is just the visuals. It's a bonus, and it's gone. I was looking at a tutorial on <laughs> on YouTube. Most bad things happen that way, right? And I wanted to shoot. I wanted to come to y'all in this fast, high definition at, you know, 60 frames per second type stuff and did not realize that you can only shoot 10 minutes. So the first part of this podcast visual, you got only the first 10 minutes and you missed the other 18, 28 minutes. That was so dope. And I can't recreate that moment because it was real, wasn't scripted. A lot of stuff we do is off the cuff because it's just a conversation. The way conversations flow when you're with a bunch of people, right? So I have to redirect you to Anchor. Um, you could Google me, the podcast in front of your friend, friend of your pocket conversations with Colt Nation. It's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on Stitcher. It's on Pocket Cast. It's on Google Play. So you can find a podcast anywhere. That's right. What she said. You can find it anywhere. So if you want to hear the remaining. I mean, it was so dope. We talked about R. Kelly. We talked about Joy Woods. And we talked about fixers and likability. And reason why people have PR. And we talked about Offset and, and Cardi B. We talked about a lot of stuff. But not in a bad way. We talked about just... We always keep it really light, fresh, and positive on here. I do get a little black power because that's just who I am or whatever. But the show must go on. In the infamous words of P.T. Bonham from Ringling Brothers, Bonham and Billy Circus. <laughs> and his show didn't go on, and neither did ours. But anyway, it's the thought that counts. The show must go on. So I wanted to come back to you just to explain what the hell happened. So me changing my, um, my display or... You know, the, the speed in which I come to you through my phone affected the time that I had with you guys. So, the 10 first minutes was powerful, though, because we talked about Sir Jones Truth, talked about the history of Women's History Month, we talked about TAM tips. So, we got a lot in in that 10 minutes, which just showed you how full the show is. And I try to cram in so much because I don't want to. I don't want to stretch it out. I see a lot, you know, I don't want to go an hour, whatever. People got other things to do with their time. So I'm just very appreciative of the time people do spend with us. So I kind of just want to, you know, stick and move, you know? talking about taking it out of the DM. Oh, okay. Yeah, true that. So uh, we talked about that, taking it out of the DM. That's how we'll pause it. (laughs) But let me just... (laughs) We're just talking about basically when you are... Going back and forth on the page, engaging, because engagement is so key to growing your your following. I have a big following, but a lot of times people don't engage on the page. I think a lot of times people are shy to admit that they like certain things that I like, you know, like Seymour's or certain views that I have on spirituality or whatever. And people don't want to argue back and forth with people about health and spiritual things. or So they come to me in the DM, and they do tell a lot of people. You know, and but what I want you to do is start utilizing the comment section of the page, the comment section of the YouTube channel, because that shows sponsors and people that I can get some real cameras that don't cut off in 10 minutes because I'm using my phone. I'm coming to you straight from my phone. I am a friend in your pocket because, you know, I'm really coming to you live and direct from a device I use for my phone. Not no cameras, not no fancy lighting. This is all, you know, grassroots. So, engage with the page on the page as much as you can. If you have something private that you want to talk about, I don't charge people for consultations. People come to me all the time with issues and stuff, and I talk to people on the phone. People always tell me I should charge, but I just do what my y'all give a talent is, and that is... And that is what I do. I help people. Now, if they want to come back and give a donation or they want to do something nice for me, I'm not... Sometimes I'm opposed to it. I've turned down stuff, but, you know, it is what it is. This is the thought that counts. So, if you can't, all I ask you to do is hit like, share it, and, you know, tell people, this is a good podcast. That's a good page, you know. Help us build the following so that we can get sponsors, so that we can do other things because we have a wealth of information. There's four generations around this table, and we talk about a lot of different things that affect families every single day. But we're fortunate because we actually get to have the conversations. Some people don't even know how to start the conversation. So 
it's important to know pop culture, what's going on, because especially if you have children, grandchildren, godchildren, you want to be able to connect with them. And the only way to connect is to have a common goal, commonality, you know, a common denominator. So we talk about everything because this is a house conversation. So it's a family podcast. It's a family show. As you can see, we got a little Tay Tay. We talk about everything, you know. So I just want to try to know that we just leave you i just got cut off because i was trying something new but at least i tried and i failed but i tried so now i can tell somebody else do not shoot in 60 frames per second if you are going longer than 10 minutes on video i had to learn the hard way so like i said again i'm gonna redirect you all to listen to the entirety of this podcast on anchor apple Stitch, stitcher google play I, that's how iTunes, Spotify, all those good places where you listen to your podcast, that's where you can go. And again, I wanna, oh, I'll just briefly touch on um, the health challenge that we're doing right now is the fruit and water challenge. And I talked about it in great lengths on the podcast. But before you change up your diet, before you do anything, especially if you have medical conditions, if you're pregnant, anything, consult your family physician. Before you start anything. And if you don't have a family physician, please know your body. Know your limits. And don't eat fruit and water if you're feeling faint. If you got to eat something, you got to put a piece of bread in your mouth, you got to do something. And so a lot of times it's mental. But you will get crazy headaches because you're detoxing and stuff like that. So you will have physiological effects. So I want you to know your body. And basically, if you can't do it, you can't do it. Maybe you can only fast you know, one meal a day. Maybe you can fast two meals a day and eat one meal. But the bottom line is that you're trying and you're doing something different, breaking generational curses that affect our health because we all have wound up having the same thing because we eat out the same bowl. You know, that you ever heard that? You see a family, usually they say this when people are fat or whatever. Oh, they eating up the same pot. Yeah, they are eating up the same pot. So, of course, naturally, they don't look alike. So, just, you know, just take care of yourself. This is what this is all about. If you have questions, you can actually, if you go through the Anchor app, you can actually leave me questions, and I can answer them on air for you. So that's also another cool feature about that. And if you have questions, leave them down below in the comment section, and I can answer those questions too. Anybody else have anything to say about what happened to us? No? Were you disappointed? Bugging. Bugging. Uh, bugging. <laughs> the phone was bugging. Uh, it is what it is. This yeah. is a part of the roaring. Yeah. I'm so pissed. Because, you know, we got so many haters. Like, you know, people just don't want this show to work. But it's going to work. You know why? Because I don't see anybody doing this. I, I You know, and I'm not copying in nobody. I never have. I always want to be original in the things that I do. And I've been consistent. Consistently original since the beginning and that's the important part of this podcast is you know you got a lot of them out there and they're all good and their own right or whatever but i just want um one of the things we talk about is forging and carving our name in history and that's something that we should all do human history not just women history men history black history your history it should be history everybody has the ability to make and leave their mark on history so, you know, like I said, if you tag your name on the, the wall of life, you know, you can do all of that. And this is my part. This is our part. You know, and everybody, I want everybody here sitting here to branch off and do other things, you know. But this is this is the conduit for that. So, anything you can do, anything you can think of is a business. And it's viable and someone needs it. So, start your podcast. Start your um, YouTube station. Start whatever it is that you need to do. But do it because you are history. You are history. Okay? And so. And you know what I'm you good? Mama Pocket was falling too. She was dropping jewels. Yeah, I missed all of that, man. I'm pissed off. Tay Tay was misbehaving. You know, Bashar ran past the camera. See, when you ran past that camera, you should have looked at it. Oh my God. You know, so like I said, please go listen to the podcast. We do need to get our numbers up on that podcast. Um, like I said, they play with my numbers on every platform I'm on. I don't know what it is about me. But thank you all for tuning in and thank you for your interest in my family and just know that I love you all. And like, you see to me. And we didn't even get to say see you later and we're going to do that right now. I love you all, Hope Nation. Until next time, episode 
10. Mwah! <laughs>